Hi guys, this is Daryl and welcome back to Sci-Fi Odyssey. Today we're tackling an epic challenge, one that even psycho history might have struggled to predict. Isaac Asimov's Foundation series and its adaptation on Apple TV, and asking with all the challenges, does it still hold true to Asimov's vision? The Foundation series, for those unfamiliar, is a sprawling sci-fi saga written by Isaac Asimov. It spans centuries, entire civilizations rise and fall, and the laws of mathematics predict the course of human history. In 2021, we had the first season of Apple TV Plus's adaptation, and we're about to embark on the second. You can watch my season one review here, but spoiler alert, I was a fan. The primary challenge in adapting such a grandiose narrative is its scale. The books are an epic space opera set to a cosmic scale, filled with multiple characters, political intrigue, and mind-bending science set across eons of time. How do you even capture that in a TV show? Well, the Apple TV Plus adaptation made some significant changes that I know were jarring for hardcore fans. If you were hoping for a faithful rendering of Asimov's intricate universe, you might have found yourself sorely disappointed. Asimov's foundation is a complex mosaic of interlocking stories and novellas, a narrative spanning hundreds of years and an entire galaxy. The chronology and sheer scale of the books, along with the temporary nature of the characters, would likely make a faithful adaptation a totally daunting task for any showrunner. However, it could be argued that the liberties taken by showrunner David S. Goya in some respects make the show more a reinvention than an adaptation. In the face of these changes, does it still hold true to Asimov's vision, or is it simply piggybacking off a beloved IP the same way we've seen a lot of recently? I won't name names. <coughs> the Wheel of Time and the Rings of Power are so awful they made my eyes bleed in real life. <coughs> Cold. Anyway, despite the deviations Foundation took, I found I was able to enjoy the show immensely, separating it from the books. Generally, I firmly believe in faithful adaptations. I think there's a responsibility to keep the spirit of the thing, but also that some books lend themselves well as straight adaptations, while others unfortunately do not. And Alas Foundation, in my opinion, is one of these. Firstly, Asimov's Foundation is less about starship battles and more about mind-bending concepts and plot twists. But modern TV viewers generally crave the whole package. Action, plot, characters, the works. Especially if you want to reach large audiences. One of the central themes of Asimov's trilogy is violence is the last refuge of the incompetent, which might seem tricky to align with action-packed scenes. The Selden crises in the books are resolved through cool, calculated logic, not blazing guns. This is where we see a reimagined Salvo Hardin, the ward of Terminus, who's not afraid to flex her muscles rather than her frontal lobe, resulting in action-led plots that take a wildly different approach. Also, Asimov's original trilogy was all about the big ideas over characters, and not so much about individual personalities, but again, most TV audiences want characters they can latch onto. To stick rigidly to the original story, characters would feature for perhaps a season, then be replaced by a whole new set of characters as the story jumps forward a century. So far this is something the writers have attempted to find a workaround for, meaning yet more departures from Asimov's original story. Showrunner Goya introduces completely new elements to the show, such as crafting rich backstories and motivations for key players, as we saw with Gal's backstory, the Cleonic genetic dynasty for continuity, a concept absent from Asimov's original work, as well as taking characters in different directions, most notably Salvor, Gal and Demazel. The most significant character deviations involve Salvor's radical personality change and the introduction of the Invictus plot in Season 1, which completely diverges from the books in such a way that it's hard to draw comparisons to the source material beyond character names and places. These alterations not only shift the tone of the series, they also seem to steer Foundation into an area more reminiscent of Star Wars than Asimov. The extent of these changes, particularly in Season 1's concluding episodes, raises questions about the show's commitment to preserving Asimov's original narrative. 
The series at certain points seems to bear only a nominal connection to the source material, potentially alienating those familiar with Asimov's work as well as those hardcore fans who are hoping to see the stories they know and love come to life on the small screen. The deviations in the Salvor Harding character from book to screen are so stark, she actually seems to be the antithesis of Asimov's creation. In Asimov's foundation, Salvor is the first mayor of Terminus City. However, in the show, Salvor instead functions as the warden of Terminus. She keeps the people safe and is more of a warrior than a politician in the show. In the books, Salvor famously states that violence is the last refuge of the incompetent. However, it is Salvor's father, Abbas, who utters that line in the show, while Salvor seems to believe otherwise. She dismisses her father's advice as old man's doctrine, prepares to fight the encroaching forces on Anacreon, and regularly carries weapons. While she's initially more trigger happy than her book counterpart, we could see her move toward her father's ideas of peaceful philosophy in a well-crafted character arc. A few other deviations include a new take on Harry Seldon, the vaults, and the Seldon Crisis. In Asimov's books, the stories unfold over hundreds of years. Asimov takes us on a journey through time, allowing us to witness the evolution and decline of a galactic empire, the rise of new heroes and villains, and the endless dance of societies and cultures across millennia. This narrative approach offers a breathtakingly broad perspective on the future of humanity. Translating this sweeping scale to the small screen I can see would present a significant challenge. How do you maintain the character development audiences want and expect and narrative cohesion when your protagonist might not even be around after the next few episodes? This is where the show makes another major departure. It narrows the timeline, focusing more on a single generation of characters. This change allows the series to delve deeper into the lives and struggles of specific individuals, something that TV series are particularly well suited for. By doing so, the series presents us with a more intimate, character-driven narrative. We get to see how the grand events of the Foundation universe affect our characters on a personal level. The writers want us to journey with them, experience their triumphs and failures, and see how they shape and are shaped by the currents of history. Of course, this shift in focus comes with trade-offs. The series may not capture the same vast sense of time and history that the books do, but it attempts to offer its own narrative strengths, providing more human-centred view of Asimov's grand universe, while at the same time creating devices for the story and the characters to jump forward in time, such as the Cleon clones, Demoiselle the robot who will never age, and the fact Gal and Salvor jump 138 years into the future, setting up season two. In my view, the series attempts to take the broad strokes of Asimov's epic and fill in the details with its own colors. However, was this necessary? Is that what Asimov fans wanted? One method the writers might have taken is to approach Foundation as an anthology, with each season being connected, but to essentially introduce a new ensemble of characters in a new time with every season. With several popular anthology TV shows recently showing the anthology is not to be dismissed, it would be interesting to know if Goya considered this at any point. When you think of the Foundation series, one of the first things that comes to mind is its grandiose scale. But when it comes to adapting this immense narrative for the screen, the challenges are significant. First, there's the issue of the timeline, which we just explored. Then, there's the issue of complexity. Asimov's universe is richly detailed, with intricate social, political, and scientific concepts at play. Balancing this complexity so that it's engaging but not overwhelming for viewers would be no easy task. And let's not forget the challenge of visualising Asimov's future universe. Everything from the design of starships to the look of alien worlds needs to be imagined and brought to life in ways that feel true to the spirit of the books. How do you even visually represent a concept as abstract as psychohistory? The Apple TV Plus series grapples with this issue in a number of ways. It distilled the timeline and altered and added characters, attempting a more direct engagement with the audience while opening up a fresh narrative angle. However, is this debatable reduction of complexity a form of dumbing down, or is it simply an attempt to avoid overwhelming the audience and maintain engagement? 
In my opinion, the balancing act here is between preserving the intellectual richness of Asimov's universe while also crafting a story that is visually engaging and emotionally resonant for a TV audience. In this sense, the grandiose scale of Foundation is not just about the vastness of the setting or the span of its timeline, but it's also about the depth and richness of its ideas. And the challenge for any adaptation is not just to capture this scale, but to translate it into a form that is engaging, accessible, and true to the spirit of Asimov's vision. So while the Apple TV Plus series may have made some significant changes to Asimov's original narrative, this transformation aims to bring the grandeur of Asimov's universe to a new medium and a new audience, while attempting to preserve its intellectual richness and narrative depth. So does the series capture the essence of Asimov's vision? It might depend on what you believe that essence to be. If it's about the grandeur and complexity of the future galactic civilization, in my view, the series delivers. But if you're looking for a faithful adaptation of the book's timelines and characters, you might find the series a different beast. Ultimately, the Apple TV Plus Foundation series is its own interpretation of Asimov's universe. It borrows from the source material, but also adds its own unique elements, some of which brings strengths of their own to the story. In this sense, the series is a testament to the enduring appeal of Asimov's vision, and as Apple TV Plus reimagines his universe for a new generation, the important thing for me is that the core ideas of Foundation remain true to Asimov's ideas. The exploration of future, the interplay of history and individual action, the power and limitations of knowledge. This requires a careful balance of faithfulness to the source material and practical considerations of TV storytelling. The changes to the original are significant, and like them or loathe them, in my opinion, they brought some of their own unique narrative strength, such as the Cleons, Gal's backstory, and Demoiselle's story arc, while at the same time attempting to weave in the themes from Asimov's original works. For example, we see this in the themes of stagnation. Essentially, the show has evolved into a distinct entity from the books, taking considerable liberties with Asimov's work. As the second season is due to land, it would make sense to prepare for further divergence. However, saying that, I'm hoping that the introduction of the mule, an iconic character, might bring the series a touch closer to the source material. While the Apple TV Plus adaptation might not faithfully follow the timeline of the books, in my view it brings the Foundation universe to life in its own unique way, while at least attempting to keep the essence of Foundation something I believe to be vitally important to any adaptation. So whether you're a long-time fan of the books or you're new to the Foundation universe, the series, while it might not be the Foundation you know and love, it is, in my opinion, a Foundation that's well worth exploring. So what do you think? Does the Apple TV Plus adaptation live up to Asimov's legacy or has it veered too far off course? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, guys.